Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here in Wilmington, North Carolina. It's Thursday, the 17th of August, 2023. On the update today, that is the big question. What is going on with the hurricane season and not just the Atlantic? The Eastern Pacific, now a big player in lower 48 weather. Don't want to leave out our friends in Mexico. Not a lot of people live along a good portion of the Baja. A lot of it is pretty empty out there, but there are people there. So yes, it is time to start thinking about impacts from upcoming powerful Hurricane Hillary. It is going to deliver quite the punch to our friends over along the Baja Peninsula and then bring a lot of moisture and other impacts into southwestern portions of the lower 48. But yes, we all also want to know what is happening in the Atlantic Basin. It is record warm pretty much everywhere, yet we don't have any named storms right now. What is going on? Uh, I'll try to unpack as much of it as I can for you. I don't have all the answers, but like I've said, especially recently, I want to show you what I look at even if there was no you. But because there is a you and YouTube and social media, it's nice to be able to kind of do this together. I present the evidence here, what I'm looking at, and then we can discuss in the comments and then we can talk about things going forward based on what we looked at each and every day. I know they say it's like a watch pot never boils. Seems that way again for the Atlantic Basin, certainly. But let's first start off in the Eastern Pacific. All right, there's Hillary. This is going to be a big, big newsmaker, a big problem. If we click on it and we look at the key messages here, very important for what's going to be happening. Significant impacts of the Baja Peninsula and the southwestern United States this weekend and early next week including after it becomes post-tropical. Very, very important. Again, a technical term, but even though it might not be a name storm or whatever the case may be, it is all about the impacts with the potential for significant, very, very problematic flooding uh, for portions of the southwest U.S. and elsewhere in the western United States. Large swells, that's going to be happening. Those are going to propagate northward towards the Baja and eventually Southern California. Some of the different um, pieces of this really nice dashboard from the Hurricane Center, the rainfall uh, QPF, quantitative precipitation forecast from the Weather Prediction Center. Now listen, you look at some of these and you say, what's the legend? The legend is four to six in yellow, six to 10 in orange. And you think, yeah, I mean, those are some pretty impressive rains, but you might be thinking, I'm in Florida, I'm in Louisiana, we can get four inches of rain in an afternoon thunderstorm. What's the big deal? And even in the green areas, which is a large area, two to four, again, you might scoff at that if you're back east. Let's call it east of the Mississippi, right? And uh, you say, hey, two to four inches, that's an afternoon storm. Driving home on I-4 in Orlando or whatever, I get it. But that's in an area where the, the rain gets soaked up pretty easily. You still get ponding on the roads. You're used to it. The geologic landscape is used to it in the east. Out west, two to four inches of rain, six to ten, in a very short amount of time is like getting it over the course of a year in a couple of days. Not good. It starts to flood. It gets concentrated in these arroyos. You get big time problems. Boulders getting knocked loose. Landslides. I am not hyping this up. This is what could happen. The potential is absolutely there for this to be a major disruptive disaster for a huge population area. We're talking Southern California from LA, San Diego, maybe over to Palm Springs, and then the interior deserts down there. Death Valley, very, very popular tourist spot because of all the heat lately, people taking those selfies and group pictures over at Furnace Creek. I was there just a few weeks ago. I saw it. I know. The road going down into there is this long grade, and you're driving down a, a an old riverbed, the highway that goes in there. And I was thinking, I was talking to my colleagues, I was like, what if this filled up with water one day with a huge system that comes in? Where would you go to be safe? You'd have to get up on the canyon wall and lose your vehicle. That could happen. It happened last year at the California-Arizona border just from monsoon rains washing out parts of I-10. So don't underestimate this. The threat is real. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. We never know until it's happening you know, in the present tense. But this is going to be potentially a really, really big problem. Now a moderate risk of flooding 
If that was a moderate risk for severe weather, it would be hyped up. Lots of chasers on the way. There probably will still be that, which I think is a good thing. Shining a flashlight on this, so to speak, uh, from the storm chase community, from the media. I know Fox Weather, local and national news outlets are going to cover this, and good, because it is going to be a big deal for our friends in the southwest United States. So here's the track map, and again, cone of uncertainty. I just got a text over uh, Facebook Messenger a little bit ago from a friend of mine who is a news producer in Las Vegas, and she said, hey, we're in the cone. What does the cone mean? Well, the cone is simply about the track of the center and where it is most of the time. The cone doesn't tell you anything whatsoever, a big fat zero, zero about impacts. And the impacts, we think we know what's coming. I just showed you that. But we are still a little bit a ways, a ways away from really knowing what those impacts are going to be. More tomorrow and certainly more on Saturday. And it just makes sense. The closer you get to the event, the more the certainty and the forecast confidence goes up. But you can see it's forecast to be a 4. Wouldn't shock me if it becomes a 5. Hard to do with these larger hurricanes. And as you're going to see here, oh yeah. Hillary is a very large hurricane. Big envelope of energy. It's going to be moving fast when it gets up here relative to what we're used to seeing. And that's because we're going to have this huge heat dome sitting over the nation's midsection here. Hillary's going to come up and do what we saw on the track there. There's an upper level energy uh, trough kind of coming into the west. And this is your alleyway through here for Hillary to escape through around the big heat bubble in the nation's midsection and east of the upper level trough off the west coast of the U.S. That will help to slingshot this fairly quickly, and that is a big key here. It won't have time to lumber in and just wind down and lose that thermodynamic profile from the bottom up where it's just colder water, because yes, the water's off L.A. They're cold, absolutely. We're talking 60s and 70s at best. The thermodynamics are not going to be there to keep it a hurricane. But again, that's a name, that's a label. The impacts are still going to be there. Big swells coming in, depending on when it hits the Baja. And that still is uncertain. I still think we're going to get a lot of swells coming out of it. San Diego, the south-facing beaches in L.A. County and vicinity. Surfers that you know the different breaks out there, you're going to love it, but you got to be careful. Some of these swells could be more than you're used to seeing. Meanwhile... What is happening in the Atlantic? Well, there's our disturbance. It's finally starting to show up. I say finally because I wasn't real sure where it was coming from. And I, I, I mentioned it yesterday. That it looked like it was over here. Now we're starting to get some difluence aloft in the atmosphere where the upper level uh, winds are such that the air is spreading out. And so we're getting some convection here. The energy is starting to show up. Then we've got other energy out here. In fact, let's just slide the animation over a little bit more to the east, courtesy, of course, of tropicaltidbits.com. Just want to make that clear, right? There's the uh, system we're going to be watching that's headed eventually into the Gulf over here. And then we've got more energy in a very convoluted, I don't even know what's going on out here, this monsoon trough, just a giant area of energy and these vorticity maximas out here. What's going to form off of them, if anything? Heck if I know. I mean, again, I want to be honest with you. And I think it's important when anybody in science of any kind, and even I do sports analogies from time to time. It helps to make things easier to digest, I think. Honesty is very important. When you say, I don't know, I think that's important because it's honesty. I don't know what's going to happen with that mishmash out in the open tropical Atlantic so what do we know? Well, we know there's a lot of dry air still, very stable air. We are starting to reduce the dust, though. I probably should have queued up the tweet for this, but I did see something yesterday in the thousands of tweets that I see every day that the overall dust is starting to really diminish. And look, it's only August 17th. I've also seen a couple of tweets that, eh, hurricane season's really not going to amount to anything. We might go through all of August with no-name storms. Quick sports analogy, pick any game you want, no matter what the sport it is, and you're not doing well up to about the end of the first third of the game, whatever it is, and you start throwing in the towel. You know, ah, we're probably not going to do very well. Forget it. Like, it doesn't always work that way. 
Just because something is the way it is now doesn't mean it won't change later. That sort of recency bias is important. Well, it's this way up to this point. Why would it change? Well, climatology. Uh, we've talked about this before, but anyway, very interesting situation in the Atlantic. Not so much because what's there now, but the changes that are coming overall, and I'll show you that as we progress. First, though, back to a little bit of history for our friends in California. And you know what? I can't remember the last time I've ever asked you folks on YouTube to share. I don't do that. But I want you to share this video with your friends in California. Tag people, share it, whatever you got to do. I want to make sure they understand this. Not a lot of instances of tropical systems affecting California. This is one of them. Good old Wikipedia to the rescue. 1939 had a tropical storm come in and it was a pretty big deal. But that was way back in 1939. What was it? It was... Hang on, I'm getting a phone call, and we're going to have to shut that down. There we go. Um, I should just put my phone in airplane mode when I do these updates. During um, 1939, it was a hurricane. Of course, it made landfall. In California, you can look at this little graphic here. Damage to crops and structures from flooding. 45 people died on ships. Caught off guard by the storm, of course. We didn't have uh, satellite and uh, reliable recon and, and all that other fancy stuff like we've got now. That's 1939. More recently, I was six years old, actually um, five, because my birthday is in November, but that's neither here nor there. 1976, Hurricane Kathleen, tropical cyclone that had a destructive impact on California. On September 7th, a little later in the season, uh, that's when it did so. It became a hurricane and moved towards the Baja, and this is the track. Oh, does that look familiar or what? Look at that. And then look at that. Wow, history, a very important guide when we're trying to understand what could happen. Look at these rainfall totals. This is what happened. 14 uh, in the maximum area, 14.76 in San Gior, Gior, I don't even know how you say that. Gorgonino, Gorgonio. Wow, Mark. Uh, <laughs> That place, we'll say, it's embarrassing when I can't say the names, but that's all right. A big, heavy rainfall maker, Kathleen, on a very similar type track to what Hillary could possibly do for the area. And to that end, this tweet here from Jacob, I've met Jacob before, up in uh, the Northeast during a big winter storm a couple of years ago. He and Jack Sillen, good friends. We've often talked about them on some of our updates. But I feel like this is really important here. Note, Jacob says, the WPC, Weather Prediction Center forecast, calls for Hillary to produce quite a bit more rain across much of the American Southwest than the 1939 hurricane did. And then he says, more similar to, there it is, Kathleen, but still more impressive in many places. This is Kathleen's two-day precipitation. This is based on old analytical data from the past. These reds and purples, pretty high rain amounts overall. You again, you go, hey, look, come on. That's just a few inches. A few inches in a short amount of time out there can be very, very problematic. So please, once again, if you're in the West, this is the emphasis right now, and we have to start really thinking about getting ready in whatever way we can. I'll be out there. I'll talk about that before I wrap things up. I'll be covering it over a large area. I've got my work cut out for me. That is for sure. Um, but these different guideposts from the past can help us understand what could be coming here with Hillary. All right. So now let's take a look at some of the models regarding the Atlantic Basin. Let's focus on that for the rest of the update. Okay. We got this big old area. Again, I say we don't know. I don't know. Well, let's look at what we do know. Huge area of uh, subtropical high pressure sitting over the Atlantic. And then this gigantic area of energy down here with these different lobes of energy, of vorticity. Of course, there's Hillary over there. And then, v barely discernible, but it's there. There's the energy that will eventually try to make its way up into the Gulf of Mexico over here over the coming days. Well, what, are, what does everything look like from a moisture persp perspective? Dry. That's the brown. We saw that very easily and readily apparent on the satellite imagery. Some areas of deep moisture down here in the deeper tropics. 
And so why isn't anything going? Well, first of all, there's too much energy out there. Nothing's really consolidating. And we can see that if we go back to this particular mode of looking at the GFS, the 850 millibar geopotential height and the cyclonic vorticity. That's that key word, the vorticity. You got this energy here, another pocket here, this energy over here, and of course there is a hurricane in the vorticity field at 5,000 feet. So let's move this out into time and notice what happens and what doesn't happen. Like there's four distinct areas on the GFS. One, two, three, four. And then there's this little impulse here, count at number five, uh, going across Florida. So why aren't these developing? Well, there's obviously something holding things back. Probably a good bit of it is the stable nature of the atmosphere out there. Mid-level dry air, the dust that we've seen, of course, come off Africa recently, and all that energy, all that vorticity competing against itself over such a large area. And then the computer model is trying to figure this all out with all kinds of uh, fancy math and physics and we're not seeing anything standing out as being alone, so to speak. I talk about this as like a big grapevine. We're not seeing any ripened grapes necessarily. But that doesn't mean it won't happen. Models are not forecasts. The forecast gets made from usually people, right? There can be model output, model guidance, but the model itself is not necessarily a forecast. All right, and the models are also not gospel, as they say. It's not set in stone. This is what's going to happen. Even 24 hours out, a lot can change. And we only need to look at Ian last year as a great example of that. 24 hours before landfall, a lot of people still thought, you know, Tampa, Sarasota, and it may landfall down there just northwest of Fort Myers proper. 24 hours. You just never know. So this is 60 hours out. There's three days, four days, five, and you know, finally get out to a week. And let's just take this out to 10 days because we wanna, I want to show you something remarkably important. That's the GFS on August 27th in the morning around 8 a.m. Eastern time. Remember that, all right? Here's the Euro from th the same run today, same extent of the atmosphere, 5,000 feet. Let's run this out to 10 days. Oh. Look at that. That certainly is a lot different than the GFS is showing. Uh, yeah. So which one is quote unquote right? It's mayhem. I don't like what is going on. We're not seeing any consistency or agreement between the models to speak of. So the guidance is very difficult to put our hat on and say, okay, let's hang our hat on this. We're getting consistency, agreement, a consensus. I mean, you got this, you got this, and then just for fun, I, I don't like necessarily using that word because it's very uh, serious stuff, but you get the idea. There's the Canadian at 10 days. Like, that's the worst case scenario. This backs it off a little bit, and then you've got the GFS, which is like, hey, what hurricane season? You see how this is getting to be like, uh, like what? And, um, you know, like, it's very difficult. Uh, let me do show you this, though. This is important. I'm going to back this up to the beginning. Watch, because I think this is really, really big. There's our impulse right there going through uh, the part of the Greater Antilles. Let's just look at it real quick on satellite. Oh, wow, look at that. It actually matched up perfectly. What are the odds? Come on, you got to give it to me. That was, it's probably Levi's doing, Dr. Cowan. He did a good job there where they almost perfectly match. There you go. That's the impulse there that's showing up in the Euro there on the analysis. Watch what happens as that progresses into uh, the Bahamas and into the Eastern Gulf. And I know you're looking at that other thing. Hold on, wait. That approaches Texas, and it tries to amplify there sometime Tuesday, late Tuesday. So you got to watch that. That could be a sneaker. That's more than five days away. More than five days away. There is so much that could happen in that five, six days. I mean, just look at this down here. What is that? Where did that come from? Euro spins that up real fast. There's 60 hours. There's 72. Darn near tropical depression or whatever down there. And we can look at some of the other. Let's get rid of that little bar I put in there real quick, though. Let's just analyze this at this particular part of the uh, the, the Euro la uh, layers. 
And yeah, 1006, uh, pretty good overall structure with it. Move this through time. And hey, wait a minute, excuse me. A pretty stout tropical storm in the Virgin Islands. When? Just a little over four days. Between four and five days from now. Really? Four and five days from now? Where is that? Like, what is going on? Like, that's why the title says that. We have to watch this stuff very, very closely. Writing things off because they're not there on day 10 or day 7, you need to be looking closer, people. Day 3, day 4, day 5. Don't worry about all that stuff in the future. Some of this stuff could happen quicker than you think. i got to keep that in mind because I'm getting on a plane tomorrow to head out to Phoenix. Why Phoenix? Don't get too panicked. I do have people that watch in Phoenix. That's my staging area. Why would I choose Phoenix? Well, just in case... LAX has too much rain or something, or San Diego or whatever, I can at least drive back to Phoenix and, and fly home, or to maybe San Antonio, because i got to get to the Gulf Coast. I have to watch all this stuff, too. While I'm looking over here, something sneaks in from over there. i got to be careful of that, because I don't want to miss stuff that's you know uh, hitting you know Texas or whatever. California is important. So is Texas. So i got a lot to juggle myself. Gosh, it's just maddening, isn't it? Listen, a couple things to make you very aware of. Partner of ours, this is important, not just a sales pitch. I don't have a bunch of endorsements and sponsors. The ones that I do have, they all came to me, and I've picked and choosed over the years, or chosen, and they have all been great. And this is no exception. Our friends at Quick Dams, this could be very, very important. This is the product sheet. I'm going to put a link to it in today's update. These flood bags, you know, it's not going to be long that we're going to start seeing tweets from different county governments about where you can start filling up your sandbags in the southwest. It's coming. That is time-consuming, laborious. Uh, they're messy. They're an environmental issue when you have to get rid of them. They don't last a long time if you had to storm. I mean, they got a lot of hurricane season left in the Pacific. This could happen again. Hillary might not be the last. These flood bags are remarkable. They use a very interesting uh, material inside that absorbs water. They come in a box that's very easy to deal with. You don't have to be shoveling sand in a sandbag. You might want to get these if you are out west. I am trying to help you with a product here that could come in very, very handy. And if it's not now, you can store them for next year's monsoon or the next month's hurricane that might come in the eastern Pacific sandbags even when they are not full have a much shorter shelf life overall than these do they are phenomenal and it's from our uh, friends at quick dams they are available at all kinds of retailers in the desert southwest i don't want to single any one of them out and it's of course on amazon.com so i'm gonna put a link to that product uh, page right there they have a lot more than just these but this could come in very useful for you in the southwestern and western u.s as this flood situation, I'm trying to make me disappear, come on, uh, as that flood threat manifests itself over the coming days. And finally, our Patreon, I love it. They've made it so that you can join up without having to pledge anything and at least be a part of the community. Right there, I love that. Join the community. It's like its own little social media universe for all kinds of creators. We're in the weather world over here. And you can join, and I can make the post available to everyone, and you will see it. And then when you are ready, or you see an instance where you want to get access to stuff like this interactive map and our live cams and so forth, you can join one of these levels that is appropriate for your budget, and then you can scooch back down again and make it all free if you want to, or you can stay at one of the, the levels that meets your needs. Fantastic, great move by the folks at Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash hurricane track or just get the app on your old iPhone or Android device or whatever you got and uh, search hurricane track in Patreon and you can become a part of the community and at least stay up to date on what's going on. Just a quick hint, Patreon now, a little pro tip for you, allows creators to post videos directly to Patreon. Patreon has their own content delivery network now like YouTube is a CDN, a content delivery network. And so I put these videos in Patreon first, even if it's just a few minutes ahead of time, and I make those available to everyone. You don't have to pay to see the videos first. That's just, 
I love it. I love what Patreon has done. So just a little little hint for you there. I do put them in Patreon first. Even if it's just a few minutes ahead of time, you get the scoop before these. Because YouTube has to render it and goes out globally, and it takes a few extra minutes. So in that spare time, I put it on Patreon, and our uh, patrons get to see the videos first. So there's that. All right, I'm going to be leaving tomorrow afternoon, headed out to Phoenix. I will post about what I'm doing, all the plans, whatever. It's going to be very dynamic. I don't know where I'm going to be. I could be all over the place. But I am working on a plan related to what Hillary is going to do out there. I will do an update tomorrow morning before I head out, and then I'll talk to you next after that from the desert southwest of the United States. You guys, as always, thanks for tuning in. I do appreciate your time and attention. I'm Mark Suddeth over here at Hurricane Track. I'll be back with you tomorrow morning with more.